Uh, Boris Johnson across the pond, uh, the UK Prime Minister, will not apologise for using the discredited claim that Keir Starmer personally failed to prosecute Jimmy Savile, Downing Street has said. It comes after the Labour Party leader was confronted by a mob on Monday evening. He was in a co- He's in a corner. We know Boris Johnson and his uh, key aides repeatedly partied during lockdown. They broke the rules they set while people couldn't hold the hands of their dying relatives, uh, while people watched relatives being buried on Zoom. Uh, and, and and he was in a corner. So all of a sudden, there he is in the House of Parliament. He's desperate. He wants to grasp for something, to turn the tables on the leader of the opposition. And he thinks, I'm going to use child sex abuse as a political tool. And he doesn't care about the fact that the whole Jimmy Savile false smear was popularised by far-right extremists yeah. on social media. He doesn't care. It was just useful. But look at what the consequences are. How important is it when we look at this that we don't look at it in isolation? That's the temptation. A causes B, so let's talk about A and B. Because I know you're talking about uh, this forming part of a much bigger and more complicated tapestry. Yeah, well, I mean, these these form of far-right extremists obviously haven't been magicked up, magicked up by Boris Johnson. The, the, the point is that he's helping to legitimise and radicalise him. As you know, the Jimmy Savile smear is false. It has been circulating for a long time, particularly in the darker recesses of Facebook, where it's been spread by far-right extremists of the sort that you saw mobbing Keir Starmer and, for that matter, his fellow Shadow Cabinet Minister, uh, David Lammy. The, the point is, firstly, this isn't new in terms of Boris Johnson. I wrote a column two and a half years ago entitled Johnson's Ugly Rhetoric Thrills the Far Right, but he's playing with fire. And the problem has been with Boris Johnson, uniquely, I would say, compared to other Conservative Prime Ministers, we had the National Front in the 1970s and 1980s, a far right uh, party, which did not look to Margaret Thatcher as one of their own. That's not been the case with Boris Johnson. So, you know, we had demonstrations in 2019 where far extremists would yell at people like myself, we've got a lamppost just for you, and alternated that with, we love you, Boris. Tommy Robinson, the convicted criminal and far-right extremist, uh, said Boris Johnson was the man for him. He was going to support him as prime minister. Uh, Britain First, another far-right organisation, told its members to join the Conservative Party after the Tories won the general election uh, back in 2019. Uh, so if you like, what you should see is a clear fence, a big wall between the mainstream right and the far right has crumbled. Mm. And Boris Johnson, I'm afraid, is very much part of that. But look, this isn't the first time this has happened. I, I don't want to get a small violin out. I've been mobbed myself by similar elements over and over again around Westminster. I got attacked by a neo-Nazi uh, who got sent to prison for nearly three years. Jeremy Corbyn, the former Labour leader, again, he someone went to prison when they punched him in the head with an egg, a right-wing extremist. I'm afraid a lot of people found that very funny at the time, who are now condemning what happened to Keir Starmer. Mm. His, his car was mobbed in Salford when he was Labour leader by far-right extremists. Uh, again, some of those people who particularly hounded uh, other politicians and journalists, including myself. So you can't look at this in isolation. This form of right-wing extremist has been whipped up by Boris Johnson but also the British media. I don't know if you probably followed all this during the Brexit drama. Mm. Front pages of British newspapers had things like crush the saboteurs, enemies of the people, which is how some judges were described when they wanted to have parliamentary scrutiny of the Brexit process. Traitors. There's another term that got splashed across newspapers and in the language um, of of politicians. Mutineers, uh, saboteurs. This kind of language uh, has been mainstreamed by mainstream politicians, including Boris Johnson, and it's legitimised the sorts of big we saw mobbing Keir Starmer. And, and uh, is it a case that Boris Johnson and like-minded Conservatives have adopted that far-right element, or is it the other way around? Well, look, Boris Johnson is not a man of conviction. I think, <laughs> let's put it, put, put it that lightly. Am I saying Boris Johnson was a far-right extremist? No. Uh, Boris Johnson infamously submitted two columns or wrote two columns, one supporting Remain, the other supporting Brexit. Uh, he's not someone who is full of conviction. In fact, a lot of Conservative MPs don't even see him as particularly Conservative because he's not very ideological, unlike a lot of them. The, the point about Boris Johnson is he will opportunistically use rhetoric for cynical political ends. And if that includes demagogic language that the far right like, then so be it. 
And that's what he did during the Brexit drama because he wanted to popularise this idea that the will of the people was being sabotaged by a parliament, which actually the British people had actually elected at the time. Um, and and you know and and his allies talked to, as I said, traitors and saboteurs. People around Theresa May did that. I mean, she's now being portrayed as some sort of secular uh, saint, which is fascinating because she hired as her director of communications the guy who did the front page splash on the Daily Mail, which was enemies of the people. Mm. It's not specific to Boris Johnson. It's about mainstream conservative politicians who adopt inflammatory and demagogic language for cynical partisan ends, and they do not care who that fuels and who that legitimizes. The genie's out the bottle. The, these far-right extremists, as I've said, you know, they will behave in this way anyway. Unfortunately, we've got growing right-wing extremist problems. We had a Labour MP murdered by um, a far-right extremist, a terrorist. Let's not forget in 2016, Joe Cox. Rosie Cooper, another Labour MP. There was a far-right plot to murder her with a machete. Uh, we've had other... Uh, a surge in, in foiled far-right far terror plots. So I'm not saying these are created by conservative politicians, yeah. but given that atmosphere, they've helped legitimise it for cynical partisan political ends. And it's dangerous. It's very dangerous.